Well, greetings, this is Trev from OnlinePClearning.com. This is the second tutorial in creating the Easy Invoice Generator. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you basically what the template that you have downloaded contains, how you can alter it to suit your needs, and also I hope we'll have time to be able to put in all the dynamic named ranges for the application. So hang on, that's what we'll do. First of all, let's have a look at the template that you've downloaded. First of all, just a little bit of housekeeping with Excel. When you finish the application and when you viewed the one that I showed you in the overview tutorial, you noticed it was a little different to this and the way it looked. Now the reason for that is that I always set my applications once they're done to make sure that we remove the header and remove the formula bar. So you just go to the view tab to do that. Click on the view tab and here where it says header we'd remove and formula bar we'd, re we'd remove as well. Now we'll put them back in for now, but when you've finished your application or when you're viewing what it's going to look like before you use it, always tick those, untick those two boxes. And the other thing I always do is I always make sure that the actual ribbon itself is hidden. That's the button up here. All right, so we'll leave them all out now, but you just need to be aware of that. Now, looking at this, all of these are shapes. The invoice that takes you to invoice, and we'll go back to interface, all of these here are shapes and each of this shape is assigned a hyperlink. Now, the hyperlinks are just basically static named ranges. So what's a static named range? Here they are all in here. Here's all the static named ranges. Now, for getting the hyperlinks, if we just click on the static named range, it takes us to that named range. So summary, here it is, A1 is the named range. And if we go to our home tab, or if we go to formulas, I should say, name manager, and then have a look at whatever it says summary and just have a look at the reference to it. I'll pull this over, you see it says that's a reference to invoice summary A1. Now static named ranges are very easy to create. You just click in any cell, click into your named range box, type, type in the name you want and hit enter and then it appears in here. So all we've done with these static named ranges is we've assigned them as a hyperlink. So if I go to invoice here, for instance, right click and choose edit hyperlink, you'll notice that we have its hyperlink to a place in this document. And you notice that the named range is a named range called make invoice. And if we checked that named range, which we can do again from the formula bar, make invoice is a reference to invoice, sheet invoice A1. Now why do we do that? Why did we go to a, di or a static di named range rather than reference the sheet? Well the reason for that is that we want these buttons to work regardless of what people do with the sheet names. So if people change the sheet names we still want the program to work even though we're going to hide these sheet names in the finished application. So hyperlinking to a static, uh, to a di a static named range is much safer or well, much safer than using a sheet name. Now, to remove these tabs at the bottom here, which you would do in the finished application, I'll just do this while we're doing some housekeeping, I'll do that now. We'll go to Options, so we went to File, Options, and then over here to the Advanced tab, just simply scroll down. It's a little bit harder to find than it was in 2003, and we want to make sure that we untick this box here that says Show Sheet Tabs. And when we do that and click OK, our sheet tabs are removed. All right, well, let's get started. The first thing I want to do with you is we want to go and create our first static named range. So click on the invoice button, go to invoice. Now this range across here is a static named range. So click on the cell date, pull it across here, and we're now going to create a static named range. Click in the name box at the top, and I want you to type in accounts. We'll be referencing this later in code. So once it's typed in, hit the enter key. And now of course, no matter where we are in the worksheet, we'll just go to another book. And we're now, if we click down and we choose accounts, you see it highlights that range. So that's how to create a static named range. Now, if you've had anything to do with my tutorials in the past, you know that um, I'm really mad keen on dynamic named ranges. I just think they give so much power to your applications and we're going to use them a lot of, of dynamic named ranges in here. Oh there's one other thing I need to show you before we move on 
and that's I put a spin button in here. See here we this spin button. I just want to show you that in the code so that you can understand um, what to do in altering that because I've put in here I think we go down to 49. I just click right to the bottom end of available range yes so I've taken down to 49 but you may not want that many or you want might want more. How are you going to adjust your spin button to suit? Hit the alt key and then hit F11. Alright when you get to F11 find the sheet that we're working on. Now the sheet that we're working on here is the invoice sheet. Sheet 2. Double click that sheet to open up the VBA editor for that sheet. I'll just get rid of some of the space here. Now each of the sheets I've put in this piece of code at the start which is an activate and it's just basically going to scroll to the top of the sheet for you and it's also going to zoom the sheet to whatever you want. So if this doesn't fit on your screen and you wanted to make the application fit on your screen you'd change that from 100 zoom to 90 zoom to 60 zoom whatever you wanted. Okay that's in every sheet I put that in there for you in the template. Now here's the spin button. Now one is called a spin up and one is called a spin down. Okay, now all it is is a for loop which means it's going to go 1 i equals 49 to 19. So this one is going to spin up. It's going to go to, to row 49 and spin up to row 19. So remember we said a minute ago that our, our invoices went down to row 49. Well now if you wanted yours to go to row 80 you change that reference there to 80. Okay, that's all you'd need to do. Change that to 80. If it started at row 5, you change this to 5. Now here we've got the spin down button over here on the left. It's just the opposite. So all you do, if it started at 5, you'd put 5 here. If it went to 80, you'd put 80 here. And then you change these little message boxes here. If range um, 49 equals active cell, then message box blah blah blah. So you change that to suit. That would then go to 80 and this one would go to 5. Okay, so that's the spin button explained. Just close or minimize the VBA editor for a moment. We'll close it down and we'll scroll to the top of this sheet. Is there something we want to do here with this sheet before we go any further? And I'll set this up now and we'll probably this will be as far as we'll go with this tutorial. So first of all, you'll notice there's a hidden group of columns in here. Put your cursor here and highlight and scroll over. So you're crossing over the hidden columns. Right click and choose unhide. Now into here we want to put some of the things that we want to move over into our database. Well, What do we want to put in here? Well let's go over to the purchases sheet because we're taking this information and dumping it over in the purchases sheet. So over in the purchases sheet you notice we have date, invoice, customer before quantity. So here's the information on your sheet right here. Right, this information here and to the left of it we also want to include the date, invoice and customer. So just click on that and then right click, sorry highlight those three cells again, right click and choose copy. Then we'll go back to our invoice sheet and go one, two, three to the left, right click and choose paste. And that puts in those three categories. You can just paste them as text if you want. But what we're going to need to do now, I'll just give us a bit more real estate here. What we're going to need to do now is to make sure that we pick up the customer from here. So we'll go equals into there. We'll type in the equal sign and then we'll click into customer. And then hit the F4 key to make it an absolute reference. So we've got that and then hit enter. So now we're referencing whatever the customer will be in here will be referenced in here. With that cell highlighted, grab the cell and what I want you to do is to copy it down. Copy it right to the end of your range, right to the very bottom. So it would go right down to there. So every time we put the customer in here, it's going to show up in here. Now with invoice, which is an invoice number, we'll do the same. Equals and into invoice over here. Hit F4 to make it an absolute reference. Hit enter to enter the formula. Click back on the cell and now drag this to the bottom all the way down to fill the whole invoice up and again with date we will go equals and then it's the date and we need to make sure hit the F4 key again and then hit enter we need to make sure that this is formatted 
as a date. Now, whatever you format one date as here on the invoice sheet, on your purchases sheet, on, on your um, interface and invoice and purchases, uh, and your summary sheet, make sure that you use consistent date formatting right throughout your application. It's very important if you're transferring data across. It's going to make things a lot, a lot neater. So once we have that set up again, go all the way down to here. Okay, now, once you have that, highlight the three of them, right click and choose hide. We don't need to see them anymore in this application. What we can do, of course, is move our shapes back over. Now to stop those shapes moving next time, just right click on the shape, go to format shape, and here where it says properties, click on the properties and choose don't move or size with cells and click close. And just do that with the create invoice one as well so that that doesn't happen to us again. That's something that I overlook. Don't move in size with cells. Okay, so now when we hide and unhide that, which we will a little later on, those shapes won't move. All right, well, basically, uh, we're set up now, ready to start putting in our dynamic named ranges. And I think, seeing as we've come this far, uh, we'll leave that for another tutorial. What I would do is put into here your starting invoice number. Every time you put in an invoice number, we're going to increment it by one. So put in the starting invoice number. You know, nobody wants to start with invoice number one. So we might just start with 100. How about that? All right, this is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. Pop along to the website, grab the template, have uh, play around with it. This has basically been an overview of what the template can do for you, how it's set up, how you can modify it a little bit. And uh, now we're ready to go with putting in our dynamic name pages. Thanks once again for listening.